I'm genuinely happy to find that someone's finally taking 12k seriously. No joke, I wasn't expecting much from this unit based on my previous experience with 12k printers, but the results speak for themselves. This is the sharpest 3D printer I've ever used, and I even have the evidence to back it up too. Put it this way, the results here are going to make my future comparison video against its competitors very, very easy. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. Now, don't get me wrong and don't get too excited, there's very little to make me go wow with this printer, but only because I've had so many Elegoo printers prior to it. There's just so much here that's the same as what has come before. There's very few enhancements, and that's fine because this printer's neither marketed nor priced as a top tier printer. Don't expect any bells and whistles, no advanced features, and you'll be the opposite of disappointed. I guess that means you'll be appointed. But that same point of lacking innovation actually has a silver lining, because what Elegoo have done here is refine what worked before. The Saturn 3 is quite obviously the direct successor to the Saturn 2, with its main calling card being an upgraded display, which is now kinda 12k, unlike the previous generation's 8k. And I say kinda because its resolution is 11560 by 5120 it is a 16x9 screen, and for anyone who has used a screen size calculator, you may notice that the pixels on the y-axis are too few for this resolution. This is because, for some technical reason that's beyond me, the pixels in this display are rectangles, not squares. Whilst pixels in LCDs are typically square, it's not uncommon that pixels in some displays don't have a 1 to 1 ratio. I've seen a lot of comments on previous videos suggesting this may cause some kind of problem, but the truth is, it really won't. But this does inform what has been the most directly comparable metric between printer's quality, and that's the pixel size. On the x-axis, this is only 19 microns, but even if you wanted to print the thinnest, smallest, very smooth wall that this was capable of, the y-axis is still 24 microns. So the best this printer is capable of rendering is determined by its weakest value, so no matter which way you slice it, this is a 24 micron printer. But, as this generation of printers has quickly shown, resolution is not everything when it comes to determining a printer's sharpness. Because there's a chamber below the screen with a light source, when that light travels through the screen, it doesn't travel straight up and towards the build plate, it travels outwards too, which causes LCD bloat. Not having so much of this is the biggest benefit of DLP printers like the Mars 4 DLP, but they're limited by pixel resolution and print size. And on competing printers, that issue is very apparent, and you can't solve it unless the printer has a method of directing that light in more of a specific and straight direction which this does with a frunal lens, just like the Saturn II before it. And the result of this, well, I'll get onto that, but it's good, it's, it's really good. Let me get through the required parts of the review and we'll talk about it, because there's some important functional stuff to cover first. So, unboxing is good because you can slide it out of the box whilst allowing it to remain upright. Thumbs up on that one, Elegoo. Looks-wise, it's pretty much the same as the Saturn II, it's almost identical and it's got smooth plastic but angled housing, though it's odd that they've done away with the techie star decals that they used on the Mars 4 DLP and the Max. I guess Elegoo realised that they were fairly pointless additions. It's got dual linear rails and a really solid C-frame, which now encloses the Z-rail arm. The Z-rail itself initially appeared to go all the way up to the top, but it's not secured at the top of the frame, which may lead to some Z-wobble judder, though I've seen little evidence of this in its early days. It just would have been nice to have a bearing up here securing this in at both ends, but Elegoo are typically the more cost-efficient brand. And on that cost-saving front, the VAT. The VAT's quite low and quite narrow. I've seen bigger VATs on printers this size, which allows for more resin to fit in for a larger print. And because it's so narrow and compact within the case, resin will often drip and be attracted to the static of the plastic housing and run down the inside of it. It's just messy at first, but eventually leads to dripping under the rim and sticking the lid to the base until you either cure it or scrape it off with a knife. The printer comes with its usual affair of extra kit, like Allen keys, extra bolts, filters, gloves, scrapers, and a cheap USB drive. I always warn people these are cheap and should be replaced ASAP before they fail and lock up a printer. Oddly though, and it's a small thing, I need to call out and give thumbs up to the scraper in here though, which is pretty nice. It's quite sharp and has a comfortable rubber handle, so this has now replaced my outdated one. 
Back to cost saving though, once again the USB port is on the side and at the back. This bothers me, I've said it in many videos, I'd prefer it on the front so I can put other devices right up close to the sides. It won't block the fan because the fan's on the bottom. But despite this, the printer's pretty quiet, it's been just a metre and a half behind me at work all week and the fan noise has never bothered me once. The fan also shuts off when the printer's not printing, it was constantly on whilst the printer was on in the last generation. And, like all Elegoo printers now, it comes with an activated carbon filter which is powered from the USB port inside the case. I haven't noticed any smells from this printer at all once these are enabled. And the lid also comes with a vent hole if you want to connect this up to an extractor. Or the upcoming Mars Mate, which is a printer sized carbon filter system and I'll be reviewing that as soon as I get my hands on with one so make sure you click subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss it. And it's also worth noting that this printer comes with LRF support, which is much better than the directly competing brand who only use LPL. When it comes to the UI though, it, it's fine, it works, but it's just starting to look a little bit outdated and pretty cheap when compared to other printers. I know it's the tiniest of quirks, but is it really that much effort to spruce up the UI a little? It, it makes the whole printer just look cheap. What really matters though is printing, and when it comes to printing, this printer comes with a lifetime activation code for Tango Slicer, or so it seems. I've actually learned more about this since my previous reviews, and this is an Elegoo specific cut of Tango based on Tango version 2. Annoyingly though, when I open this app now, it asks me to auto update, which I did to version 4. But with that version, I was completely unable to sign in until I downgraded to version 2 again, restarted my PC, then the app, then unticked auto sign in and restarted again. The more I use the Elegoo version of this app, the less I like it, mainly due to its cumbersome movement controls. But when I reached out to Voxel Dance to resolve the earlier sign in issue, they've since provided me with a free license for the full application to try out, which has some very detailed auto support settings specifically for miniatures, but I'll cover more on that in a future video about that slicer. But I did have what's quite a huge issue with this slicer though, though it may not be the slicer, it may be inherently with the new .goo format. I sliced up a pre-supported Sephiroth model from Nom Nom Studios, and I exported it directly to the included USB drive. Whilst that was printing, I sliced up two other parts of that print and saved them directly to my PC. When the first print was complete, I tried to move those files from my PC to the SD card, but these .goo files from Tango were nearly 5GB each. So here's some PC tech info for you. First of all, the USB drive that they give you with this is only 4GB. But, even if you try to use a larger one and I've recommended replacing them anyway, the problem is that these are formatted in the FAT32 format, which only allows you to transfer files which are 4GB in size. And I did try formatting that larger drive in XFAT, which does allow for bigger files, but when printing with this, the Saturn 3 failed to print with a memory error at about 70% complete. Yay, wasted resin. So at this point I had no choice but to just put fewer things on the print bed, which severely limited me from using anywhere near the full volume of the printer. Oh, which I should have mentioned earlier is near enough 219 by 123 by 250 millimeters. This is the same height as the Saturn II, and it's 5 centimeters taller than this printer's direct 12K competitor. Anyway, I later sliced up four Big Boss heads which I'm using to practice painting skin techniques. I sent these straight to the USB drive. Little did I know, because there were no errors, the actual file was once again too big for the drive. But the slicer wrote as much as it could and presented me with what looked like a complete .goo file on the drive. It was only when I came to print this that it once again failed halfway through, with the same memory error on the screen, because the file itself had been truncated by the maximum capacity of the drive. So instead, I sliced the same four models in Chitubox, which exported a .ctb file, the older format, and this was only 600 megabytes. So I've no idea if this is a Tango thing or a .goo format thing, but be careful, because this could easily trap you if you try and slice and save straight to the USB drive like I did. But until I figure out more on this, I'm just going to stick with slicing in Chitubox, thanks. Now, when it comes to print quality, I first want to have a quick go at Nom Nom because these models are amazing, but the supports are atrocious. 
Yeah, these guarantee more printing success, but the model is filled with tons of tiny little bobbles everywhere, many of which can't be easily cleaned without damage. So sort this out, guys. Like, you make ace models, but this is almost as bad as Loot Studio supports. Maybe, maybe drop Atlas 3D a line, yeah? Anyway, as for the printer's print quality, well, if you've watched my earlier videos, you'll have seen me print the same exposure test time and time again. And I suggest watching my beginner setup guide for guidance on how to set up any printer perfectly and quickly using that test. Now, this test will show us how to dial in perfect exposure by matching the number of holes with the number of posts, but perfect isn't always the best exposure for prints. Again, watch that other video for details. But what this is, is simple, quick, and most importantly, measurable. All other tests will give you an inference of how certain details will print, but all we're interested in knowing is, does this 12K resolution give us better print XY accuracy than other printers? Well, I've said in many previous videos, I've never managed to print this test with more than 13 posts and 13 holes equally. Until now. And just before I show you this print, I'd like to remind you that it really helps us if you're considering buying this printer or any printer we review, or even anything from any of those brand stores or any of the affiliate partners we have. If you click on our links in the description before you make a purchase, we get a commission at no cost to you. So thank you, that's a great way of supporting us. It's also how I can keep making these videos for you, so please have a look at our links and if you're shopping in any of those places, give them a little click, then come back and watch the rest of the video. So as I said, on this printer I was able to print 14 posts and 14 holes, but you can only just see it. Please bear in mind that this 14th post has a diameter of just 100 microns. That's only slightly wider than a human hair at 70 microns. To have an idea of how thin that is, just pull a hair out of your head now and don't look at the root side, but try to look down the length of it from an end. Do you see how small that is? This printer can print it. So long as you are using a very sharp resin. Now, as always, I'm using the Frozen 8K resin here, but mainly because Elegoo didn't send me any of their 8K resin, which is pretty similar, but a little bit more flexible. But having seen thousands of comments on my videos, most people don't use these high detail resins anyway. They're usually too expensive for one, except maybe Soraya Tech's Fast Navy Grey, which is a decent price, but they're typically much more brittle resins. I certainly don't use them for practical miniatures. And I really need to tell you quickly about this device I used, which is the Tomlov DM202. The guys from Shopify contacted me while I was doing my Saturn 3 review and said, if we send you one of these, will you do a video? And I was kind of like, nobody on my channel is going to care about this thing. I'm not going to sell you any of them. And I don't want to do a video that's just going to waste your product and my time. But I did have a use for it, which we've seen here, and I'm going to be using it a lot more going forward. So if you're after a digital microscope that's got a monitor attached, yeah, brilliant. And the good thing is, as you've seen, I can connect it up directly to my video recorder so that you can get direct footage from the device. Great. So thanks for sending me this, guys. And I'll pop a product link down below in the description if it's something you fancy checking out, because for what it is, it's pretty cheap. So yes, this printer is capable of some of the tiniest detail rendering I've seen yet. But th the difference is minuscule. Again, I can't stress enough that yeah, the printer can do it, but it really depends on what resin you're using with it. So have that in mind when you're considering buying your next printer. If you're using soft and cheap stuff, you won't get the most out of this printer, but it's still worth knowing that the printer is capable of it. So should you buy this printer? Well, if you've got a Saturn II or an equivalent already, I probably wouldn't rush to upgrade. On actual models, I strongly doubt you'd even see a difference. But if you are in the market for a new printer and this is around your budget, it's easily the sharpest 12K printer out there at the time of recording this video. And whilst most people won't see a difference in a 10 inch 12K printer over the same size 8K printer, I'm sure you, like me, would be happier knowing you bought a printer that can do this even though you probably don't need it, rather than a printer where you may one day want it, but the printer just can't do it. Now please bear in mind I'm also going to be reviewing the Saturn 3 Ultra along with the upcoming new Mars printers too, 
and I do have some concerns regarding the Saturn 3 due to its inclusion of ACF film, which I've previously shown on other reviews, helps with speed but reduces print quality. So let's see what the Saturn 3 Ultra is like when we get our hands on one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to all of our wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. Please consider getting your name up in lights like the rest of them by supporting us there. Or you can just drop us a tip in the form of a super thanks. That's the heart button with the little dollar sign in it. And also don't forget about our affiliate links, which again, that's no cost to you, very little effort, and it really helps us out in supporting the channel. It's all greatly appreciated and it helps us keep the lights on and it keeps us making these videos. So until next time, be excellent to each other. Fohammer out.